Okay, in this video I'd like to show you how to create a template, uh, which is something that I normally would have to work off of. Uh, it gets tiresome to type the same thing over and over for every page. <laughs> when a, a bunch of these elements we know are going to be in every page, right? HTML, head, body, title, they're in every page. Um, I think I may have mentioned it before um, doing this, but um, now that we've added a few elements, I'll um, bring it back into the forefront here before we move forward anymore. So let's um, swap over, I think, to my Notepad++, where I have already started to create a document. You'll recognize most of it. And I'll, I'll point out what I've added to the document um, and some things about it. So let's just jump over there and dive right in. Maybe this could be a short video if we're really lucky. Okay, so here is my Notepad++. Notepad++ and this is a new document that I have created. You see my mouse, there we go. That, we, that I have created uh, just now. And I did it on Notepad++ and probably Cot Editor might be the same here. I just clicked this one to create a new file, right? Can you see that little new there? Yeah. Uh, it's be the same thing if I just did File, New. I'll wind up with the same thing, but you can't see that context menu. So I just created a new file and I got a new tab out of it, right? Up here on the, the top here, you can see the tab. I haven't even saved it yet. I didn't want to save it because I want to make sure those of you who are using uh, Notepad++ can see some features of it as I go. Um, and so I really, I just copied a very simple page that I had created earlier for this class and I removed all the, the, the content from the body, right? So that I, I just really have the basic structure is all I really want here. It's all of this stuff that I don't want to keep typing on every page. I need it on every page but I don't want to keep typing the same thing over and over and over. Why don't I start with a page that has all of the, the common stuff in it, right? That's the idea. So I'm going to call this a template. <laughs> all right, so let's just walk through a little bit of this. Number one, notice the structure, the white space, the indentation, I guess I mean. Uh, I have my main HTML all the way out to the left, and I put this new tag that we just learned about in the last video, um, I put it at the top, also all the way leftmost. This tag, if you remember, is there just to specify to the browser that we are using HTML5, right? So we're, 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 we're using that particular version of the language, HTML5. Um, then we also learned in the last video that we wanted to add this attribute, right? because we are using English. We could just have EN, but we're being a little bit more specific in saying that we're using English from the US, the US version, which is slightly, you know, a little bit different in some ways than like British English or UK English. All right, so there's that, but that's my HTML tag. See, it closes. Well, actually it's not gonna do it quite yet because I haven't saved the document yet. So I'm holding off on saving until I want to show you what, how I'm going to save this. So that's my HTML, and there's the close of it, right? They're lined up at the same depth. Now I've got my head element and my body element. I, mean, I know I need those in every, every time I created a web page. I need these elements, right? So inside the head, we have the title, as usual. The title is indented inside the head because it's a child of the head. All right, and now this is an element, this meta element, meta tag, that we learned about uh, in the last video. Um, so we can specify to the browser all the time when we write, when we type something in the head, we're talking to the browser, right? Not to the human user of this document, right? And the white spacing has nothing to do with the browser either, right? The white spacing is important for humans who are going to be looking at this code, which includes yourself, right? You will be looking at the code. So you're doing that for your own benefit and for my benefit and for anybody else who might come behind you to maintain this 
document. That's, that's the reason why we pay attention to white space. The head gives additional instruct. We put additional instructions um, really meant for the browser. So we're telling the browser that we're using the UTF-8 character set, which is a universal character set worldwide. All right, now I've got these two new ones that I threw in here because um, I know that I'm going to want to use them <laughs> as we move forward. And if we're going to build a template, we might as well try to fill it with the things, all the things that we know we need, right? So um, I think that you may have noticed, especially over the midterm maybe, depending on how crazy you got with uh, your CSS, well, those CSS rules, there could be a lot of them, right? And you can, you can imagine, uh, after working with it a bit, how detailed you can get with that CSS. And every time you want more detail, that would uh, require more rules, right? So those, that, that begins that, that's, that style element that should be in head when we're writing um, styles right in the head, right in the, the current document it can get really rather lengthy, like super lengthy. So what we may prefer to do, especially now with just a, a little bit of rules, no big deal. But if we have a whole lot of CSS rules, we really want to separate all those rules from this file because it, it, it's, it's going to really clutter this file up. So what we, do, we can do that. We have a link um, element. And I'm just saying what kind of a file I'm linking to. This is a style sheet, right? And then here comes the href attribute again. href equals, so there's an address in here, right? So typically what we've used href for in the past was for the anchor. Well, the, the browser knows what to do with an anchor. Well, it's been programmed. It, it doesn't really know anything. So, but but it, it, so it's been programmed to... Uh, for that href to indicate a destination when something's clicked, right, in the, in the anchor. In this case, for the link, this is the location, the href is the location of your style rules, right, and that should be a style sheet. And a style sheet should end with the, the, the extension, the file extension .css. So the name of the file itself, I happen to have called my, my style. Uh, you could have called it anything else. Style, styles, the styles, Johnny Fresh styles, it doesn't matter. But what does matter is .css, right? So that the browser knows when it opens that file, this is for sure a CSS file. And inside of it are only CSS rules. In fact, and I'll show it to you when we, when we get to that. But this is how we, we link to that file. So now we'll put our, our styles all in this separate file and the browser will pull them into our document rather than filling up the whole head, the head filled with rule after rule after rule, CSS, CSS. All right. And so then that could be the end of this template, but there is one more piece and we haven't touched it yet, but we would like to eventually get to a point where we're going to uh, work with some JavaScript. All right. And so I'm going to treat JavaScript the same way um, that, we're, that I'm treating CSS here. Rather than write a whole bunch of JavaScript code up in the head here, pushing the, the body down, 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 down the page, way, way, way down. And this is an HTML page. And so it does seem a little funny to have you know, a thousand lines of styles followed by a thousand lines of JavaScript followed by finally the HTML when this is an HTML file, right? It makes more sense for an HTML file to have only HTML in it. And so we should put only CSS in a CSS file and only JavaScript in a JavaScript file, keep the three things, three things separate. And so we can, you know, to kind of divide and conquer this, uh, the, the nightmare that this could become if we had thousands of lines of these things. <laughs> so we want to use, and they want to be in the head, right? Now notice also that I don't need the script element. 
All right, I'm using the link element instead. Um, uh, script, I didn't mean to say that. I am using the script element for the JavaScript. I meant to say style. We used to use style, the style element, when we were going to write the styles right up in here. So it does seem a little funny. I know, but this is the way it is. It does seem like since they're, they are opening script element and then they close the script element, but they don't do the same thing with uh, a, the other file, the CSS file, right? It's done differently. That doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. I think the format should be the same for both. Um, if you don't need, I guess I would say, why not have another link element, rel equals JavaScript, href equals myjavascript.js. Right? And so we're bringing pages into the document in the same way. That makes more sense to me. Um, it doesn't make any sense to me that it's, they're two different lines, right? They, they don't have the same kind of format. But this is the way it is. So I, I just recognize it and I'll just pass it on to you. So <laughs> while they use href in this one, they use source in this one. And frankly, I believe source is the correct one, right? Because we're pulling this in more like we do with an image. href seems to indicate a location to which we're going to go. Source brings toward us. So the JavaScript, this part, src equals, looks like that's how I feel it should be. But I feel like we should use this. Uh, this element, the link element. So, you know, we can all have our own opinions, but after, so after you guys work with this a little bit more, you'll, you'll, you'll start to understand that this, where, where my conversation is here. And it's all academic because it doesn't matter what I think anyway, right? All that matters is what the W3C has defined as the correct way to do this. So whether I think it's incorrect or not, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. This is how it's done. This is how they want it to be done in, in HTML5. All right, so that's the end of the head. I think we're done with the head, right? And now uh, we open, I open the body, close the body, and I close the HTML up here. So what's going to happen then, every time I use this, every time I want to create a new page, I'll copy. I'll make a copy of this template, and then I'll just be writing in the body, right? This Remember, this is a, a comment. This is just to a human. The browser doesn't care about this. It doesn't it completely ignores it? So I just put this is the visible part of the page. So I just put a note there. Really, for you guys, I wouldn't leave that in there. You know, if I was really doing a, a real page. Here. So that I think is a good template. Uh, it's a good start. Now, I, if, if we're really doing this as some sort of a business that we're working on, we might build an even bigger template. Right, or we may uh, get to a point where we start to think there are certain elements that I'm always putting in to a website that that are that are pretty standard on my sites or on your sites, and so maybe you would include more elements possibly in the body. But for right now, this is for sure. Right, this has to be in all of them. So from now on, we'll use a, a separate style sheet, and when we get to um, the JavaScript, we'll use a separate JavaScript. Uh, in fact, I'm going to create them right now to just ensure that they're working, right? That these links are working. And once I have those all set up, I don't even have to put anything much in uh, the style sheet or the, the JavaScript sheet. Uh, so I'll show you as we go forward how I can just confirm that everything is hooked up so that from now on, I'll just carry these three things with me. The new HTML page that I create from this page. And then in the same directory, as this page, I'll want, in this case, because I named it mystyle.css, I'll, I'll need a mystyle.css page, and then I'll need a my myscript.js page. So I will be creating three pages at once all the time, right? I always have a template, and then the two pages that go with the template. 
So uh, file, I'm saying pages, but I, I guess I mean files. All right, so now I want to save this. Uh, but I, I definitely, I want, I need this page to have, number one, I need it to have a name. And then number two, I need it to, and that, that needs to be a generic name, right? Because this is my template. So I'm probably going to call it template.html. Um, I also need this page to have a file extension of .html. And I do know that by default, both Notepad++ and Cot Editor for Mac users are going to save these by default as .txt, .txt file extension here, right? Instead of, in, you know, for this particular one, when we get to it, it's going to be .css we need extension. For the file that I'm actually writing this in, when I save it, I need it to have a .html extension. Otherwise, when the browser looks at it, this is what's going to show in the browser. The code, the actual HTML elements will appear on the page rather than being rendered. And so we want the browser to render these, right? So if I have an H1 here, for instance, I don't care to see the tag H1 on the page. I want the, the content of the H1 tag to be affected by the H1 tag. I only want to see the results, not the tags themselves. So if you don't, if you if you wind up seeing HTML tags in your document, it's because you don't have an H dot HTML file extension. So, so let's see how I'm going to do that. I'm, in Windows, I can do a Control S to save. Right? Many people probably know that already. But so I could I could use File Save As, and I, the same thing will happen. But I'll do Control S. I get this thing pops up. This dialog box. Uh, this is my public HTML directory that I'm going into. I just want to really confirm that I'm not going to get lost here, right? So that is, right? This is exactly, I don't know if you remember my structure, but that is where I was trying to go. That's where I built this whole thing. Public HTML, so we'll just leave it right there. And um, there's my those two fol folders right there. So I want to call it See, see how it has that default .txt? We do not want that. And so on a Windows machine, I can see it as type. This is the file type. I can change this to HTML, right? So let's first change the name. I'm just going to call it template. And then I got to look down here for the HTML. That's rather small. Hypertext markup language. Right there, you guys see it? I don't know if you can see this or not. Oh, you can't even see. Yeah, you can't see this context menu. Well, believe me, it happened. A dialog box popped open. Let me see if this, maybe you can see it if I went the other way. File, save as. Can you, see? you can't see that either. See, I'm on a menu right now, scrolling up and down on the menu. All right, so I'm just going to do it, and you'll have to, uh, we'll just have to hope that it works. I just did a control S. I have two boxes at the bottom here, file name and save as type. So for file name, I'm going to type template. Save as type. I'm going to click that box so the drop down opens up, and I'm going to choose hypertext markup language. All right, so you, you just can't see any of this. So that's kind of sucks. Now, when I click save, this red, the fact that this is red here is indicating that it's never been saved. So it's going to change. Uh, the, the name's going to change, and that's going to turn blue like the one next to it in the next one. All right, so let's save. And now I'm colorized, right? because I saved it as an HTML file. So now this editor knows how to work. It's been programmed to, to it doesn't know. It's been programmed to work with, in this way, with HTML to colorize it. So now we're back to a situation where when I click on these, I can see the corresponding, um, there's the end of the script. I can see the corresponding 
tag, the open and closing tag. When I click on an open tag, I can see the closing tag too. All right, so now every time that I want to create a new file, all right, I'll do file, save as, and give it a new name. The type will automatically be HTML and all of this stuff will be in the new file. So I don't, all of this stuff I don't have to type every single time. I do need to create the style sheet page. So I can do that with this file. Uh, I'll just do new. And I'm just going to type something in here. This, this would contain, this does not need the style element. So you do not have to type the, this whole thing, right? It doesn't, oh, I didn't even spell it right, but you get the idea. It doesn't need that. We already know that this is style sheet elements. So you don't have to define that again. For me, at this point, you would just start writing style rules like th, right? Enter, and then you, you know, do whatever, do whatever you're trying to do for that style. Right, so that my first rule is in there, and I do not. I didn't really mean to do all of this, but um, I, I didn't need. Hey, let's do this one. Let's do instead of doing table header for this, uh, let's do body because then I can see if it's working or not. I don't have a table header unless I build a table, and I don't feel like doing that. Uh, it's not going to work because I put a colon there. Hopefully you guys noticed that. Actually, it's supposed to be a colon, right? It's the other one's a semicolon. Background dash color. All right, so now I'm going to file save as. Save as. Where is it? There's so many options. Oh, there it is. Save as. All right. Now I just need the name to be the same name as it was used. Mm. It's called my style dot, and it needs to have the the type needs to be CSS, cascading style sheets. So it, the name of the file is my style. And the type is a CSS, dot CSS. So let's come on back there again. And so it's just never been saved before. It's going to do that. Uh, my style. And I will do the drop down and I'll look for cascading style sheets. Sorry guys, this is, uh, there it is. <laughs> Good, I got it. Cascading style sheet. Save, and now it's colorized as well, right? Just the way we would want it to be. All right, so then I can do the same thing with the JavaScript, and I know those three files go together, and they should be, when I SFTP them over to Copeland, I should keep them all together wherever they are. Right? So the interesting thing though is once I have that style sheet created, I can use this same line here on all files that I create. Because I, I will have my styles in this one file called mystyle.css, and then I'm just going to include the link in all other files. So anytime I make another new file and I want it to use those styles, I don't have to rewrite another file. I just I'll point everybody to that file. Hey, use the use the styles from this file called mystyle.css. Right? So I think that pretty much covers the building of a template. Um, we could try to test that 
Oh yeah, then you know what I would want to do? Let's let's do this. I did not. I'm going to do the same procedure for for my script.js. I'll just create a JavaScript file, a new, I'll do new, or file new, and create a, a JavaScript file called my, I want to, want to save it. See, I did something I shouldn't have done here. I mean, it's okay, nothing's gonna break, but why did I do my lowercase and then lowercase style for the first letter of the next word? And then here I used my lowercase and then an uppercase for the first letter of the word. It's okay, I can do whatever I want, but that's not, I'm not being consistent here. And so I'm gonna wind up tricking myself because I'm thinking to myself, I always use, uh, I think it's called camel, hope, uh, camel hump notation, right? And in fact, I did not do it here. So I should have, so that I don't confuse myself at some later point, but I, it's what I did. And I already have it in, so I want to. And I want to finish this video, so we're going to move forward. So this is in. I have the style she created. I would create a JavaScript page in the same way, new file, same way I did the the job the CSS, but I would use file type JavaScript, right? So now I've got the three files: the HTML, the CSS, the JS. All right. So what I want to do here is run. and choose launch in, I guess I have Chrome open, yeah. And so there's, that's my local machine. Oh, wait a minute, you don't even see it. Hold on. Chrome browser. All right, so this is my local machine, right? If you look at the address up here, the URL, you see it's C colon, users this is this is my machine right this is not what an address on copeland looks like copeland would start with http colon slash slash udel.edu or copeland.udel.edu blah, blah 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 this is not copeland right i have not transferred these files over yet but um, the interesting thing is that was the html file that we opened up right see i see it right here template.html and template.html, if you remember the CSS that we used, the CSS for the body uh, was a rule that we set the background of the body to green. And if we do this, it's this another way to kind of look at this stuff. Now, um, there's, do you see that? Yeah. Now, if I look at the style sheet here, watch this. See, that's clickable now. And if I click it, I'll see my style sheet. So I know I'm linked here, right? I, none of the links are broken there. So now anything that I do inside of this should translate through, not should, will. Oh, I can't, I can't modify this in the browser. What am I doing? All right, so, well, come on back here, put me back up. So this did not, <laughs> The, I thought it was going to be a short video, and it is not, once again. But I think it was rather thorough, and I think maybe you'll be able to, if you have a template, it, it, it will wind up saving you a lot of work in the end. It's a lot of things you don't have to type. And you get your links hooked up properly. All you'd have to do is make sure that your page names, the name for your CSS and the name for your, um, your JavaScript, match to whatever you create those files as, right? The links in the HTML, the file names there are the same as the file names that you create in Notepad++ or uh, Ka Editor. So we always have to make sure that these links are working or it's gonna break. All right, hopefully that's gonna be helpful for you. I'll catch you on the next video.